So this is just a quick explanation of the 3D milling operations in solid cam. Uh, it's pretty straightforward once you like realize what you have to do. Um, basically what we're going to do is mill out this um, profile in here. So first thing you want to do is obviously add a new operation. And that operation is going to be called 3D milling. Who knew? Um, quick question. At what point would you ever pick anything besides like pocket profile of 3D milling? There's like 15 options. Yeah, different types of geometry. For the stuff you guys are doing, it's probably not that useful. Um, all right, so you're going to see a familiar screen. Looks similar to, uh, you know, when you make like a profile or something like that, or a pocket. But the difference is, not only do you have your target, you've got this working area that you need to define, rather than just like some chain of lines or uh, corners. So I'm going to click define there, and you'll see there's a bunch of options. Basically ignore most of these. Work on selected faces is what you're going to want to select, which allows you to click define, and then brings you into this view of your part. You can just pretty easily select the contours that you want the um, machine to be working on milling. So once that's selected, I've got my working area defined. If I, oh, sorry, switch screens on me here. If I pull this back over, you'll see Got my working area. It's called Faces 3 because I've already done this a couple times. You say, okay, that's fine. Um, now we pop down into another familiar section, which is the tools. Um, I'm going to select a flat end mill. This is what I was talking about before, where you want to rough first. Um, flat end mills are, are made for taking away a lot of material. Ball end mills are not. So you don't want to like start milling a profile like this with just a ball. So I'm going to select this quarter inch end mill. Um, go down to levels, this seems fine. Levels don't matter as much on a 3D milling operation because it's pretty much going to set your low, lower level at the base of your part, but it doesn't matter because it's only going to go to the depth that the operation is. So that looks good. Then we'll hop into technology, um, and this is the exact same type of stuff that you'll see on a, um, like a pocket. The thing to think about here is, okay, what do I actually want to accomplish with this square end mill that's actually never going to be able to uh, you can actually get to the geometry that I actually want? All I'm going to really want to do is rough. So um, you could use a hatch, which just goes back and forth. For something like this, I think a contour probably works better. It's going to look a lot cleaner um, and probably go faster. Minimum overlap is the tool overlap, obviously. Step down seems a little high, so we'll just take it to 075. The smaller your step down, the less material you're going to have to remove with that ball, which is probably going to be better. Um, clean flat during roughing, roughness, that doesn't matter so much. Surface offset will. Um, obviously, this is the amount that the tool is going to stay off of that um, final surface. 20,000 sounds pretty good. Um, and then if we hop into data, you see there's only a couple things to select. Inside, outside, I want to be climb cutting. Um, all these other approximations in these corner um, features are things you can basically ignore. Um, everything else, I just leave as nothing because you don't really want to try and do a finish pass. There's no use. So we're just going to save and calculate. Okay, finished. We can uh, take a peek at our tool paths here. Um, and that, that, that looks pretty good to me. Um, we've got a decent length of time here. I can pull that over. It's about four minutes, which is what I would expect for just a rough like this, um, and that looks good. So I'm going to exit out of that. Now we've got our profile roughed. Now we can add that final operation, the ball end mill, um, and this is pretty simple because I'm just going to pop back into that working area, say work on selected faces, but I'm just going to select faces three, and it's going to work on that exact same target area. Um, obviously my tool, I'm going to select the ball instead of that square end mill. Levels, same shit. Um, but uh, rough versus semi-finish, finish. A semi-finish is, um, it can be useful. Um, it ba basically allows you to mill geometry and, and leave a little bit of, of material on there so you can get a really clean finish with a little chatter. Some of you guys might want to try doing this, um, but generally for something like this, I would probably just hop right to a finish. 
Um, and as you can see in this drop down menu, there are a lot of options linear, offset cutting, spiral, blah, 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 constant step over. Um, we'll just start off with linear. Sounds pretty good, sounds simple. If you hop into data, you see you've got a couple options here. The step over is tiny. Uh, I'm going to make that a little bit larger. Let's say I say uh, 10,000 step over. That seems pretty good. Um, and I'm just going to say OK. Save and calculate. If you were, if you were going to do a semi-finish, would you, would you use this? Would you put semi-finish in and then also finish, or would you do another operation? Semi-finish and then finish in the same operation. Okay. Um, so then let's just see what this looks like. So pretty simply, it's just going to go along in a linear profile, and it's going to cut this whole thing out. Now you can see the time on that job. It's huge. Now, partly that's because my guess is this tool data is probably set. Okay, so that's, that's a big one. So I'd set that around 15 or, or 20, and then we'll set that Z feed at 5. Um, but even if, I, even if I do change that, that's, the time's still going to be long on that. Linear passes just take a long time, and um, they leave you with a, especially with a, with a profile like this, it's going to look a little weird, right? Because this thing's circular. And if you're cutting it in this motion, you're going to see that on the surface. It's just not going to look as natural. Yeah, what's up? So for the finishing uh, Z, depth, there you go, that's set in the tool? That's set, that's, so that finishing depth is really set by the geometry. So if I go into this working area and I, and I look at what I'm working on, this is as deep as it's going to go. It's going to go to the depth that it needs to go to cut out this entire shape. Oh, right. Unless you... The steps that it takes down. Oh, the steps it's that... It's not going to do that all at once. It's like, it feels like 20,000. Right. So uh, that roughing operation that we did is when you make separate operations, the machine and the program, the software, treats those as just separate events. It doesn't really think about what you're trying to do, which is... Billy brings us up a good point. You can kind of screw yourself because you could say, oh, I roughed it, but like, did you really take enough material away? Um, are you trying to cut a lot of material off with the ball still? And that's why sometimes it's helpful to um, go down to maybe like a smaller end mill to rough more material away or to do a semi-finish and try and pull yourself a little bit higher off that final surface. For something like this, this is small parts, this is aluminum, those cutting tools are sharp and are very strong. With a quarter inch ball end mill, I wouldn't worry too much about taking too much material off, unless you're completely burying the tool, which we're not in this case. Okay. But that is a, yeah, that's a good point to make. Um, and the, the material that you leave on is something that I'll show you how to see in a second. Um, one, of the, one of the things that Nissan and I have agreed is actually a pretty good option is this constant step over. Um, it basically will, it does a lot of the work for you. So you'll see if, if I leave this at profile with offset and I say, okay, um, I don't, and you know, this is the type of thing where it's, this operation is going to change depending on your geometry. So this is like the machine really interpreting what you're trying to do. Um, and you see it, it did a linear pass. And maybe I look at that and I say, you know, I, I like that, that only took six minutes, but Let's, let's see what that actually looks like. So if I click Solid Verify for 3D, it's going to bring me to this view where I see, oh, that's what I roughed already. So that's what, that's what the material is going to look like. Obviously, the, the bits here in the corner are not real, but that's pretty much what it's going to look like. If I play this, it's going to show what that tool is going to do. Well, that looks like garbage. Why? Well, because our step over is high, and because the program just didn't really do exactly what I was hoping it would do. Um, so if I drop that operation type down again, and I say pocket auto boundaries, this is, I think, just like a slightly more advanced way of it calculating the best way to, to mill something out. And um, what you'll see is we'll get something that looks like a spiral, which is what I would imagine would be the optimal tool path for something like this. So if we go back into solid verify, we can look and we see, okay, that looks pretty good. But I'm, I'm still not, I'm not clean there. And this is the type of simulation that you're going to want to run to see what your surface is going to look like. Because Solid Verify for 3D, actually, this is rendering it, and it's going to give you a pretty good approximation of what the surface is going to look like. Um, so if I pop back in here uh, and I change my step over, right, this is going to obviously 
drastically improve my service finish. Any questions, guys? The one suggestion I would give is um, the best way of getting good and comfortable with this stuff is to just kind of play around with it. Um, see what other people are doing, you know, maybe ask if someone came up with a good way of doing something. I don't necessarily have all the best answers for this. Um, and depending on your geometry, it's really going to change the way things turn out. So let's look at this now. Right, so that's starting to look, that's starting to look like what I would expect, right? Um, smooth surface, times relatively, relatively low. I mean, I, I, I would expect something like this, that's about a, like a three or four inch plate. Yeah, 45 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes to, to make. So um, this looks pretty good to me. Uh, now, obviously, you could then say, okay, I like that. Let me go add another operation and finish that again, maybe with a, a counter grain cut, trying to get you know, some different type of look. And those things are, are definitely done. You know, if you want a different type of surface finish, you can cut against the surface that you've already cut on, and that'll change the way things look. It can help to, don't, 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 don't touch that, dude. Come Is on. that your recording? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, that, that will affect the surface quality if you cut back against the grain. You know, it's like sanding wood or anything like that, as you can imagine. So that's, that's like the pretty quick rundown of this stuff. If you want, I can show you what a, you know, what like a, <clears throat> a semi-finish would look like. So let's do, let's do the same thing. Let's just say pocket auto boundaries, but I'll give myself a surface offset of, uh, let's give it 25. What? That means your finish is taking off the Yeah. It's for finishing cars. Really? Yeah, especially if you get a semi finish. Nah. I use semi finish a lot to actually do the finishing. Use the surface offset of zero because you just have more options. So, I mean, talking 35 minutes adds a little bit of time. But you get a lot of that crap out of the way before you, uh, before you finish. You really think 20,000 is too big of a... F I don't think that is. For your finishing time, is yeah. Depends what tool you're using. <laughs> Depends what tool you're using. And that's, that showman brings up a good point, actually. A, a quarter-inch ball, I wouldn't have a huge problem doing a 20,000 finish pass. But if you're using a 16th-inch ball, that will not work. <laughs> that will fucking break immediately. So... Uh, you're that, talking about the diameters approaching that of the mills. Right, you really, and that's, that's a big point to keep in mind. And you guys have, can see the tool tables and you can look at that. When you pick these step downs, right, so like on that roughing pass, these step downs and the step overs are going to have a huge impact on the loads that the tool is experiencing. So obviously, if I say my service offset is 20 thou and I'm cutting with a 16th inch end mill, I think that semi-finish would even break the tool because it's just too much material that it's taking off. So, so let's say theoretically you're doing this with a 16-inch end, end mill. Mm -hmm. You'd probably use your quarter-inch flat to do roughing, then probably like a bigger ball. That, or, well, you'd probably do more roughing with the 16-inch end, end mill and do small step down so that you wouldn't break it. Right, so if I was going to like, let's say that for some reason that the center of that pocket was like had some feature, like a channel that needed a 16th inch end mill to, to cut. I would cut everything that I could with a quarter inch. I'd get down, like with a quarter inch ball end mill. I'd get down to that point as close as I could. And then I'd probably go in with a six, 16th inch square end mill, and then I'd rough that area, and then I'd come in with the ball. 